Hey, welcome, good morning, and happy Sabbath, everybody. Brother Ray here, and my sidekick, Sister Rogers, you know, is with me, and we're over here at the lake and just taking a nice, brisk walk real quick, you know, so we're just asking you to um, enjoy the Sabbath and just uh, open up your heart to the Lord today, you know? We just want you to uh, uh, just rest in the presence of the Lord. Here's my sidekick right here. <laughs> I love it. And we're out here, Lord, just, just taking a, a walk and just enjoying the fresh breeze and the fresh air and um, just resting in the Lord. And I pray that uh, you all had a pleasant week. And uh, right now, we just want to just welcome the Lord with some praise. So I'm just going to ask the praise team to come on and take it away.
Well, praise the Lord, saints. Wasn't that a beautiful selection by our praise team? They are so good lifting up their voices to God in prayer and praise. I love it. I love it. I'm a singer myself. Amen. To God be the glory. Praise the Lord. Now it's time for our children's ministry. So take it away. Hey, boys and girls. Are you, have you ever done something big for God? Well, maybe after this story. See you later. Once there was a shepherd named David. He lived in Bethlehem. He loved to take care of his sheep. He loved God too. He loved to sing and pray. He loved, He did everything to protect his sheep. Sometimes wild animals would come to attack the sheep. Very wild, ferocious animals. He was not afraid. Okay, maybe not dinosaurs, but some wild animals. Maybe not a dinosaur, but sometimes there will be scary bears coming to, to scare away the lambs. But David was not afraid. He was quick and he would hit the bear and protect his sheep. Sometimes there will be ferocious lions that would come to attack the bear. <laughs> The Philistines were enemies of the Israelites. There was a giant named Goliath who marched out every day. Who wants to fight me? And everyone in Israel was afraid. No one wanted to fight Goliath. Who, who doesn't want to fight him? I'm not scared. David went to King Saul and said he could fight. But King Saul said he was too small and gave him his armor. He did too big for him. He did not want that armor. He knew God was his weapon. everybody don't you just love the colors of fall and if you look behind me it's a beautiful yellow fall tree and I love it it's a beautiful fall day outside today just a little bit crisp but sun is out and it's um, warm enough to be outside so I just love fall I love little scarves and things like that what I don't love about fall is what happens after fall all the leaves fall down and the trees look bare bare and it's really cold and um so winter not a big fan of it but fall is just beautiful and that's the reason why people make the drives to go to like skyland drive or through um new england because they want to see these beautiful colors um there's something in the bible that talks about just that um in psalms 1 blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. It doesn't feel like we always prosper, but it says that those who delight, and it also says which yields its fruit in season. So maybe you might not be in that season right now, but it does say that whatever you do will prosper. Um, so, I just wanted you to keep that in mind. Um, when we delight ourselves in the Lord, when we find our pleasure in his presence, we will never suffer the fate of the faded and fallen uh, autumn leaves. We will constantly be renewed by God's healing and sustaining presence. Um, and, and, and God is always there. He is always present and he's the same. Um, the leaves might change, uh, earth and heaven might fall away, but God doesn't. Um, Isaiah 46 to 8 says, The grass withers and the falls, flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. You know, in this time, it's more um, real than ever just because nothing, everything seems to fade away. Um, 
and you just never seem to know what is real what is not social media has kind of done that to us where we don't know if this news is real or this news is not real what is you know um and governments seem to come and go whatever but but god is always his word is the same yesterday today and tomorrow we know we can hang on to those promises so that i hope that um that comforts you today i do also want to lift up a couple of names for prayer before we go into prayer i do want to lift up um kim allgood and the rest of karen davis's family as karen um passed away um so, uh, on thursday so we're just lifting you all in prayer we're all saddened by this and just um had just lots of wonderful memories with karen and so we're just lifting up the whole family right now I also want to pray for um, some of our College Park community members that are um, ill right now. I'm praying for Peggy and also David. Um, I'm also praying for some of our own church members. Ariel's, Ariel asked for prayer for her father. We're lifting up uh, Lynette Eastman's sister, Jerry Davis's um, sister and nephew, Alma's family. Um, also for Lynette and family. This is a different Lynette and family. Uh, we're also asking for prayer for Layla, who's preparing for baptism next week, and that's a big step. And we're asking for prayer for Megan, too, who just got baptized last, last week, and, and we know the devil is out like a roaring lion. We know for sure because um, Megan was in a car accident where she was hit from the back. She's doing okay, but um, just having some aches and pains, and so we're asking for a quick recovery and just for support for Megan. So, um, if you will, let us go into the throne of grace to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are consistent. You are always there, Lord, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, Father. We thank you, but your promises are true. They're real, Lord. We've tested you in the past, and Father, there's no reason to doubt you now. I pray, Father, for all these names and maybe some that I might have forgotten or uh, maybe some that have um, prayer requests that are listening to me right now. Father, I lift them up to you, Father. You be real to them. Answer them in your perfect time and will, Lord. Um, and be there, Lord, even if it might not be our season that we're prospering. Lord, hold our hand and walk with us. Father, touch us and heal us, Lord God. Some of us are struggling, Lord, with aches and pains. Some of us, some of us have even more serious illnesses, cancers, far kidney problems, um, heart problems. Father, some are hanging on to their life because of, um, or, or just because of COVID and other things, Father, and some, Lord, that are mourning past, um, the passing of loved ones. Please, Father, comfort, I pray. Lord, we are looking forward to that um, new heaven that is not going to fade away, Lord. Father, until then, keep us, forgive us, um, wash us, clean us, make us whole, and we just look forward to you coming again. Thank you for listening to our prayers. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath, Living Water family. I'm Sean. Thank you for joining us today. I'm happy that you guys were choosing us to worship this Sabbath day with. Uh, we're going to start with a word of prayer so that we may invite the Lord, our Savior, into this discussion that he may bring light into a dark place. Heavenly Father, I thank you for bringing us together today. As you will, dear Father, I ask that you be with us. Help us and guide us, Father, all the days of our lives. I ask that you speak through me, Lord. 
I ask that you speak through me and let your word speak and not mine. I thank you for your mercy and grace, Father. I ask that you watch over each and every person that's hearing this message, Father, including myself. May, that, may it be helpful for my life, their life, and our lives, Father, that we may become one as you and Christ Jesus are one, that we may conform to your image, Father, to be overcomers, Father, in this world that we are in. In Christ's name I pray, amen. So, today we will be speaking about the Amalekites. And I want to start with where they show up in David's life. Uh, David was out on a mission, and when he returned, he um, found that his home had been overtaken. His women, his children, and their belongings were taken from them by their enemies. Things that we may experience in our lives um, when we find something being taken from us. Um, this whole, our whole existence from the beginning, we had something taken from us. We, as humans, were put in dominion over the whole earth. It was supposed to be ours, but it was taken from us, from an enemy. And uh, just like in this story we're about to find out, um, just abiding with the Lord and and trusting in him, we'll find that he has a he has a plan for that. He has a idea from the beginning of the time. You know, so many different scriptures in the Bible where we where we hear about um, enemies and enemies coming and, and things being taken and the fruit and producing fruit and abiding. So let's, we're going to open our scriptures up to 1 Samuel chapter 30. And I'm going to read, be reading from the NIV version. David and his men reached Ziglag on the third day. Now the Amalekites had raided the Negev and Ziglag. They had attacked Ziglag and burned it and had taken captives and had taken captive the women, and everyone else in it, both young and old. They killed none of them, but carried them off as they went on their way. When David and his men reached Ziglag, they found it destroyed by fire, and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. David's two wives had been captured. Ahinoam and Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord his God. Now we're going to stop right there at, chapter, at verse 6. Now, we've been given a what happened. We have our women and children have been taken captive. And we're here. We're we're stuck to mourn, um, to feel despair, hurt, pain. Um, sometimes we may be going through things in our lives, something that may be plaguing us, uh, whether it's a sin that, that keeps on popping up in our, life, our lives, and we can't overcome it. And it brings that hurt, that pain, that and then you see that 
in this situation, the people that were with David, they blamed him. They blamed him and they were talking of stoning him when in all actuality, there was another enemy. There was somebody that really deserved the, the, um, the retaliation, but it was about to be taken out on him. But we're going to see how David reacted in this situation when he faced that as we continue reading verse 7. Then David said to Abiathar, the priest, the son of Ahimelech, bring me the ephod. Abiathar brought it to him and David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? Pursue them, he answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. Now, the first thing David did when he was faced with a problem, when he was faced with um, his dilemma, the thing that brought them pain, that brought them suffering, the first thing he did was he didn't react how his, con his counterparts reacted. And he didn't look in the physical, what was right in front of him. He looked at, let me consult the Lord. Let's ask him. Let's talk to him. Let's bring him into our situation. So that's something that we can take heart, we can learn from. First thing we do is when we face with a problem, let's not lean our, on our own abilities to try to fix this or lean into our how we're feeling to react in a way off of instinct. Let's take a moment to stop and let's inquire of the Lord. He said, get the get the ephod. And that was something that they the priests had back in the day, well, back in David's time, that they used to inquire of the Lord. Now, David, verse 9 reads, David and 600 men with him came to Bezer Valley, to the Bezer Valley, where some stayed behind. 200 of them were too exhausted to cross the valley. But David and the other 400 continued the pursuit. Keep in mind, keep in mind about this, um, the 200 that, that stayed back. Um, they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David. They gave him water to drink and food to eat. Part of a cake of professed figs and two cakes of raisin. He ate and was revived. For he had not eaten food or drunk any water for three days and three nights. David asked him, who do you belong to? Where do you come from? He said, I am an Egyptian, the slave of an Amalekite. My master abandoned me when I became ill three days ago. We raided the Negev of the Kirith, some territory belonging to Judah and the Negev of Caleb, and we burned Ziglag. Now, abiding with the Lord and following the Lord's directions, he, he, David asked for guidance from the Lord, and during this time, he he lost his family, but his heart didn't get taken over with the pain. He saw someone in need and he was able to help them. And he did help them willingly. He didn't know this guy. He had no idea that this was the guy that the Lord was going to send him. The Lord simply told him, hey, Yes, I'm going to help you. It's going to, you're going to be successful. And David, sometimes 
when we hear a word from the Lord, we don't know how he's going to react to the situation. We don't know how we're going to be delivered from a situation. But here we see that David was just carrying it on, going on, and it was delivered straight to him as he was doing a good deed, something good. Feeding someone he saw that was ill, that was in pain, that needed help. And he took that moment to not only help this person, but also in the midst of him helping that person, he found deliverance in his own situation. He found guidance for what he was, what was troubling him and his men. So David asked him, can you lead me down to this raiding party? He answered, swear to me before God that you will not kill me or hand me over to my master and I will take you down to them. He led David down and there they were scattered over the countryside, eating, drinking and reveling because of the great amount of plunder they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from Judah. David fought them from dusk until the evening of the next day, and none of them got away except 400 young men who rode off on camels and fled. David recovered everything the Amalekites had taken, including his two wives. Nothing was missing, young or old, boy or girl, plunder or anything else they had taken. David brought everything back. He took all the flocks and herds and his men drove them ahead of the other livestock saying, this is David's plunder. Then David came to the 200 men who had been too exhausted to follow him and who were left behind at the Bezer Valley. They came out to meet David. And the men with him, as David and his men approached, he asked them how they were. But all the evil men and troublemakers among David's followers said, because they did not go out with us, we will not share with them the plunder we recovered. However, each man may take his wife and children and go. This shows the true character of David. David replied, no, my brothers. You must not do that with what the Lord has given us. He has protected us and delivered into our hands the raiding party that came against us. Now, I'm going to stop right there. And we see that trusting in the Lord, abiding in the Lord, seeking the counsel of the Lord in the midst of our problem, in the midst of our time where we may be facing a enemy that may be taking something from us that may have taken captive something in our lives and when we find that we see that this enemy is not a step ahead of our God he's not a step ahead of our Lord so God delivered them right into his hands and they were able to overcome. Now, you may have brothers and sisters that may be fighting an enemy, the same enemy that you're fighting, the same problem that you're dealing with, but they may not be as strong as you are. They may not be able to keep going on. That doesn't mean that they're left, they're done, they, there's no hope for them. Because when one succeed, we all succeed. David took that opportunity to tell the people, he said, it said the evil ones amongst them tried to stop them from receiving this plunder which was their possessions in the first place. Now, we have, from the beginning of time, we were our salvation, our lives, our perfectness, our, one, our oneness with God 
was taken from us. It was captured by the evil one. And God gave us a plan. He said, this is, this is what it's going to be. This is going to be my, my covenant with you. The covenant of this fruit. What do you mean fruit? Uh, they had a uh, fruit in the beginning when, when they had to pick whether they were going to listen to God and take this fruit from the tree of life or they were going to take the fruit from the tree of life and death and good and evil. And the enemy showed up and had them bearing fruit for death. Now, we find ourselves in this situation where we have an enemy at hand that's attacking us, attacking our families, attacking our minds, attacking from all different directions. And God said, I have a different plan for you. I love you and I care for you. So therefore, you're not going to be burdened by this anymore. He gave them a way. He showed them a way. But I also want to remind, um, speak on something else that the Lord said. Because the Amalekites, that wasn't the first time that they were present in the scriptures. Um, and before I read that first time they were present, not first time they were present in the scriptures, another time when they, you know, showed up in the scriptures. I want to read uh, something before we go over that. And that is, I want to read Isaiah 55. And it states, it is the same with my word. I send it out and it always produces fruit. I will accomplish all I want it to. And it will prosper everywhere I send it. Now, God made a statement about the Amalekites prior to this, way before David was even on the earth, way before he was born. It was during the time of Moses when the Israelites were in the wilderness after their exodus from Egypt. And that can be found in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 25, verse 17. Remember what the Amalekites did to you along the way when you came out of Egypt, when you were weary and worn out. They met you on your journey and attacked all who were lagging behind. They had no fear of God when the Lord your God gives you rest from all the enemies around you in the land he is giving you to possess as an inheritance. You shall, you shall blot out the name of, the Amalek, of Amalek from under heaven. Do not forget. Now, we have a... Uh, I liken these... Um, this enemy to something uh, in the nature of a, a um, some particular uh, sin that's, that's blocking us and stopping us from conforming to the image of Christ, which is someone that's pure, that's holy, that's full of love and no wickedness, nothing in him at all that's like that. And it's something that's keeping us from gaining that unity with Christ. That oneness with the Father and that oneness with the Son. Now, the God, He spoke a word and said, I'm going to wipe them out. I'm going to wipe this out from before you. So He said that and His words did not return to Him empty as we see what happened with David. He wiped them out. He returned. He went and got what was taken from them. So when I see this, I, I think about the word of God and what the word is. When Lena had her sermon last week, she spoke about the word of God being a 
double-edged sword, you know? So when we have that double-edged sword, it's able to cut even between bone and marrow. It's able to slice things. It's able to separate things. And when I think about that enemy, that, that enemy that's holding us back, that's some sin or something that's plaguing our innermost being from connecting and being one with God, the word of God is able to slice that, separate that, and bring you back home safely. So I urge you guys, brothers and sisters, to don't let the word of God be placed to the wayside. Because in our full armor of God, we have a weapon, one of the most powerful weapons. They can't be set aside. They can't be compromised. Sometimes we compromise in the way that we go about our lives and try to think things. Hey, this is this is not that bad, but this thing this plaguing us, this stopping us from being one with Christ, being in unity with the Son and the Father, that thing is holding us back. But we have a powerful weapon. And that's the Holy Scriptures, the Word of God that he, give, that he gave us. We can abide with it. And the more you abide with it, the more you spend time in it, the more the light shines on you. And when it shines on you, darkness can't be there. I don't know about you, but I've never been in, in a lit room and it been dark at the same time. Just can't happen. That's why it said, wake up, sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Let's let him shine on us. Expose Christ to the darkness and the darkness of our lives. Let's bring it to him and let him know, this is my enemy. Destroy it, God. Destroy that enemy from away from me and bring back what was taken from me. Bring back that unity, that oneness with you, with Christ. Um, the prayer that Christ was praying before um, he was bringing salvation to us before he was betrayed. He asked that we may be one with him in prayer. That prayer was so important. It was so important because it gives us one of the most powerful secrets in the Bible. It's not a secret because he said it. <laughs> so, but it gives us one. Don't overlook that. Let's not, let's not sidestep that. That oneness with Christ. That gives us deliverance from our enemy. And Christ can't be one with sin. So let's use his word. To slice that sin away from us, separating the wicked from the good. Let's live in the spirit, my brothers and sisters. Um, I have experienced this. I'm not going to tell you something that I haven't experienced myself. And I thank God for ex allowing me, for humbling me and setting me in a position where I may be separated from something that plagued me that held me back, that stole something from me, stole my integrity, stole my myself, but he sliced it away. And let's not compromise, brothers and sisters. Let's not lose focus. Let's not live of the world in the sense that we overlook this thing. It may be small to some, but it's big to us. Let's focus in on it and let the light of Christ shine. Let's bow our heads. But before we bow our heads in this prayer, I want to invite someone. I want to invite you to give your life to Christ so that he may shine his light on you. So that he may give you the most powerful weapon in this war. This holy war that we're taking part in. You can go to livingwater.com 
and click on the next step button and get equipped. Someone from the church will reach out to you if you click the next step button or uh, go to the number here that's placed on the bottom of the screen. You can text, call, and reach out. And someone will reach out back to you, someone from the church. And we love to hear from you. We love to help you on your journey. We would love for you to join us so we can all use this wonderful gift that the Lord has given us. And that's the Holy Scriptures. So we can abide with Him, become one with Him. Enemy doesn't want us to become one with Him. Let's produce fruit that befits repentance. Paul said, um, uh, if I'm, if I'm going to go on living in the body, it's going to be fruitful labor for me. Let's have some fruitful labor, guys. Let's do it. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I thank you for joining us together, Lord. Under your grace and under your mercy. I ask that you please give every each and every one of these hearers today. Let them abide with you, Father. Give them the power of your sword, the power of your word, Father, that you may cut out anything, any enemy that's trying to take over them, that's trying to stop them, Father, from being one with you, to being one with Christ Jesus. Let your light shine on any kind of darkness that may be plaguing us, Father. Wake us up according to your will. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Nothing can compare your living home, your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the Oh,
Thank you again, everyone, for worshiping with us. Hope to see you again. And don't forget, next step, we would love to have you join us. Click the next step button on our website. Reach out to us. We want to hear from you. We want to take this journey with you. We want to be one with Christ. We want to be one with Christ. And if we're one with Christ, we're one with his church because his church is the body. We want to be one with you. We want to take this journey. Next week, we're going to be having a special baptism service. Uh, and it's going to be live. So everybody come on out. It's not going to be live online. It's going to be live online, but it's going to be in person. That's the word I'm looking for. In person. You guys come on out and worship with us. It's going to be a wonderful service. Baptism are so great. We are winning another soul for Jesus. So let's celebrate together with happiness, unity, one with Christ. And you, if you want to have, if you want to take your next step and get baptized, don't put it on. Don't put it off. Come on. We want to be with you. We want to see you join us. We need more. Christ has called you. Answer the call. Till next time, guys. Have a good one.